The Holy Spirit is moving wherever there's darkness. Is there darkness in your health? The Spirit of God is moving in your health situation. He's moving in your body. Is there darkness in your family? He's moving in your family. Is there darkness in your finances? He's moving in your finances. Yes, he always moves over any situation where there's darkness. He is moving right now. The spirit of God lives inside of you, but the spirit of God is omnipotent. He can be everywhere all the time. He's not just living inside of you. He's all around your situation right now as well. Oh, that's good news. And somebody needs to hear that. Get, take that joy knowing that the spirit of God is moving over your situation right now. Welcome to a special edition of the power to change today. Who's ready for a breakthrough? I'm ready for a breakthrough. Are you ready for a breakthrough in your life? The likes of which has never been seen before in your life. I mean, God wants to do something better in your life than you've ever experienced before. And over the last couple of years, it feels like dark days for so many people. And that's what today's program is dedicated to how to experience breakthroughs in times of darkness because it sure feels like the world is getting darker and darker. But Proverbs chapter four says the path of the righteous gets brighter and brighter. You are the righteousness of God in Christ, and therefore you can expect your path to get brighter and brighter. Listen, when things get darker in this world system, God promises us that it's going to get brighter and brighter for his kids, for his children, for you and me. I'm going to show you how in today's teaching. So enjoy this word from God just for you and share it with someone, if you can, who may need to hear it as well. And at the end of this broadcast, I'm going to pray for you. So check this out. Remember, one of the reasons we can always be full of faith, full of optimism, full of confidence. Those are God words. Those are our words. Optimism isn't for people that are just in a self-help mentality. Optimism is for us to expect the good, expect the best, to look for the brighter days, to expect the brighter days. These are your days. No matter how dark it is, we're turning that around. We have authority to do something about it. And that's what I want to talk about today. So when we speak of darkness, limitations, feel limited by your financial situation, limited in your physical situation, where you feel like things are out of control or you feel helpless. Darkness also speaks of times that. When the things that we trusted. Can't be relied on anymore, where people we looked to. Seem distant or unsympathetic in our situation. The things we looked for for to comfort and and warm us offer no peace anymore. That's dark times. I'm sorry to make it. I don't mean to make uh, create a dark moment here, but I want you to understand God knows what we're going through. And that's why it says that um, we don't have to fear any evil, no matter what it looks like, no matter how bad the situation gets. And that's why I've been talking to you about breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthroughs and revival are always on the other side of darkness. I've been saying that for weeks and I want to keep saying it to you. Breakthroughs. Who needs a breakthrough? Raise your hand right where you're watching, right where you're sitting, right where you are. You need a breakthrough. Came to the right place. Breakthroughs and revival are always on the other side of darkness. Darkness isn't new to God. Darkness is not new to you or me. Remember uh, John 11 for one of our key scriptures in the NIV. Bible, John 11, verse four. I love it that Jesus said when he had heard. About Lazarus's death, he said this sickness. Come on now. This is never this should never get old for you because it's never getting old for me. When he heard about Lazarus's death, he said this sickness will not end in death. Well, when he heard he was sick, he said this sickness will not end in death. And yet it did. It It resulted in death, but it didn't end there. Jesus said something very powerful that we don't sometimes we overlook. 
This sickness will not end in death. Now, there are many translations to this, but this is the one that really speaks to me the most. This sickness will not end in death. And yet Lazarus did die. That's why we have to put our trust and confidence in what God said, no matter how it looks or no matter how worse it might get in some situations. Remember, Jairus uh, came to Jesus and said, my daughter is sick. Come and lay hands on her. And then as Jesus went, she died. In other words, even while Jesus was on the way, the situation got worse before it got better. So don't let when a situation gets worse for you, don't let that fool you or trick you into thinking that God's not working on it because God said this sickness. Jesus said this sickness will not end in death. And yet it included death, but it didn't end in death because death is death is not final with God. Death is final in the flesh, but death is not final with God. Nothing is no matter how bad it is. Why? Because he's the God who raises the dead, right? We were forced to trust God. Not a bad idea since he's the God that raises the dead. So let's talk about this and um, and really put this in proper perspective. And remember that your breakthrough is on the other side of this darkness. If we just walk by faith and not by sight, trust in his goodness and trust in his grace. What is it in your life right now where there's darkness? You might be in a dark place emotionally, a dark place financially, a dark place in your family. I want you to remember something really simple here. Psalm 139, verse 12 says dark, even darkness is not dark to God. Even darkness is not dark, he said. Because to him, darkness is the same as light because he is all light. See, darkness is just like a temporary appearance. When God is light, possesses light, brings light and we have the power to bring light. Okay, here we go. What do we do in the dark times? Genesis one, two says the darkness covered over the surface of the deep. And yet God thrives. In the darkest times, God said, let there be light. Boy, the Holy Spirit. Is moving in your situation right now. I think you need to hear this. Somebody needs to hear this. The Holy Spirit is moving in your situation right now. You might not feel him. It might not look like he is in this case. In verse two, it says there was darkness covering the whole earth, but the spirit of God was moving. The spirit of God was moving. And I want you to I want you to see this. I want you to know this is happening right now. Wherever there's darkness, the spirit of God is always moving. And what changes the darkness into light is words. And we'll get to that. But then God said, let there be light. And there was light. But I want you to know right now the Holy Spirit is moving in your family. The Holy Spirit is moving in your financial situation. The Holy Spirit is moving wherever there's darkness. Is there darkness in your health? The Spirit of God is moving in your health situation. He's moving in your body. Is there darkness in your family? He's moving in your family. Is there darkness in your finances? He's moving in your finances. Yes, he always moves. Over any situation where there's darkness, he is moving right now. The spirit of God lives inside of you, but the spirit of God is omnipotent. He can be everywhere all the time. He's not just living inside of you. He's all around your situation right now as well. Boy, that's good news. And somebody needs to hear that. Get take that joy, knowing that the spirit of God is moving over your situation right now. I just declare healing where there's sickness and darkness of pain and darkness of pain and sickness, disease. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're moving in that body over that body. And I release healing right now in Jesus name. Lord, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're moving over. The waters of each person's financial where there's darkness in their finances, I release and I activate blessing and speak blessing right now in Jesus name. Father, where there's depression and anxiety and fear. I speak peace and joy. And an awareness of your presence. Thank you, 
Holy Spirit moving in each person's life who's feeling that right now. I speak light. I speak peace. I speak. Joy. I speak confidence. I speak calm to the raging waters of your life right now in Jesus name. Man, Jesus did that. That's why I do that. That's why you do that. That's why we can do that, because Jesus did that. I'm just doing and speaking over your life the way Jesus has shown me and how he spoke over situations. You have that same power. I don't have that power because I'm a pastor. I got that power because I'm a son of God and you're a son or daughter of God as well. All right. Okay. now let me let me finish this and start it and finish it and all at the same time, basically. (laughs) So what do we do in our midnight hour when there's darkness? What do we do? Number one, we have to have an anchor for our soul. You have to have an anchor for your soul. Our soul needs an anchor. I think it's in Hebrews chapter six, where it says hope is the anchor of our soul. We have to have hope in the promises of God. We have to have an anchor. Everybody needs an anchor. Every ship needs an anchor. What does an anchor do? It's some people consider their job an anchor, uh, their spouse an anchor or close friends an anchor in their life. But God wants his word and his promises to be your anchor. When storms of darkness hit, you need to be anchored in faith in the promises of God. It says this hope we have is an anchor of the soul. That Jesus went before us as a high priest and passed through what divided us from God. And he is now brought us near. We have this hope as our anchor, a hope both sure and steadfast. I want you to know that you you have an anchor. When the winds are trying to move you, the enemy's trying to move you in all sorts of different directions. You got to have an anchor. And when it's dark, you got to have an anchor. What is the anchor? God's promises are his anchor, are our anchor. Romans 8, 31. If God be for me. Who can be against me? If God be for you, who can be against you? You see, it really isn't a question. He does say, what shall we say to these things? If God before us, who can be against us? It's a rhetorical question. The first question is a legitimate question of a question needs an answer. But what shall we say to these things is the question. The answer is, if God is for us, who is who can be against us? That's the answer. It is leaves a question mark there. But only because it's rhetorical. If God is for us, doesn't matter who's against us. God is for you. It doesn't matter what's against you. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world. It doesn't matter uh, po- what's happening in politics, what's happening in government. We, we operate by the government of God. We're governed by something higher than this world's systems, We're governed by love, spirit of God, the word of God. That's our anchor. Love is our anchor. God's word is our anchor. An anchor is a base, right? It's something that always brings you back to the same place, the same truth. It's a constant. It's a North Star. If God be for me, who can be against me? God is on my side. These are this is my anchor that that I'm more than a conqueror. This whole passage of Romans chapter eight is my anchor. I want you to take this as your anchor that you are. We are now more than conquerors because he loves us. We're more than conquerors. That's the anchor. We're more than conquerors. And if God be for us, who can be against us? He didn't spare his own son. Therefore, he's not going to hold anything. He's going to freely give us all things he will not withhold from you. Wow, that's an anchor for me. It needs to be an anchor for you, knowing that because he loves us, even when we don't see the answer yet, we don't feel it. We know. That it's turning around for our good. It's turning around for your good right now. Listen. The Bible says in Psalm 119, verse 130, the entrance of his word. Brings light, the entrance of his word. The entrance, I think the King James says the entrance of his word. I think the New American Standard says the unfolding of his word. Think about it. It's unfolding in front of you. It's entering the entrance of his word gives light. So number one, we have to have an anchor. Our anchor is his 
Our anchor is hope in the goodness of God. Right. Our anchor is God is for me, not against me. Our anchor is Psalm 27, verse 13. I would have despaired unless I believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Boy, when that never gets old for me, how about you? I would have despaired. What 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 anchor gives me hope? What is the anchor that gives me hope that no matter what it looks like right now? I would have despaired unless I believed unless I believe what I'm going to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. There's our anchor. Secondly, enter his word. The second thing that that brings light, that brings a breakthrough out of darkness, while we don't have to fear the dark is the entrance of his word. Boy, when the word of God enters a situation, what situation are you dealing with? A bad report from the doctor, a bad report in your finances, whatever it is, enter the word, enter the word, enter the word enter the word. In other words, the entrance of his word brings light. So make sure that the word makes an entrance into that situation. When when I walk into hospitals, I make sure the I make sure the word enters the hospital room with me. If I'm going to pray for the sick or whatever the situation is, whatever you're going through, whatever is dark, make sure the word enters. See to it that the word of God enters into that situation that the word of God enters your home, the word of God enters your family, the word of God enters your day. Every day we should pierce the darkness with the word of God, because the word brings light and light brings healing and light brings sight and light brings answers and light brings warmth. Light is the most powerful force besides the love of God is the light. Without the light, we're in the dark. We're going to be cold. We're going to die. (laughs) Light brings it causes seeds to grow. Make sure you have the power. To see the word enter your situation, because the entrance of his word gives light, It gives light, it gives light, it gives light, which brings us to the next thing that we do in the darkness. How how can we no matter what, what pandemic, finances, economics, family situations, disease, hopelessness. What what do we do about it? Well, here's what we do when it's dark. We don't talk about the darkness. We talk to the darkness. When when God said darkness was over the earth, but the Holy Spirit was over the Hey, there's darkness over your situation and the Holy Spirit's over your situation. You decide which one is going to prevail. When God said, let there be light, that's when the Holy Spirit, who was moving over the face of the deep, brought light into the darkness. You are the deciding factor. Which one are you going to let both darkness and the Holy Spirit are moving in your situation? It seems like darkness is winning. But when you open your mouth, the entrance of his word brings light. And when you talk to the situation rather than about the situation, it changes. It has to obey you. Jesus said it did. Mark eleven twenty three. He said, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt, but believes that what he says shall happen, it shall be granted to them. In fact, he goes on to say in verse 24, when you pray. Believe, believe that you have received all things for which you pray and ask. I think we miss this sometimes. All things for which you pray and ask, believe you have received them. Well, I'm not going to believe I receive them until I see him. That's not how that's not how light works. That's not how God's word works. All things for which you pray and ask, believe you received them. Why should we believe we received them? Because Jesus already paid for them. So we should believe we've received them because when you're asking for it is not when it happens, when Jesus died on the cross is when it happened. But when you pray and ask for it, that's when you activate it. That's when you're bringing and you're inviting what Jesus did for you into your situation. Believe you have received them, whatever those things are, all things that you pray and ask for. Believe you have received them. And they're granted to you. That's the grace of God. That's so 
beautiful. I believe I've received it. Yeah. That's when they're going to be granted. That's when they're going to be. Begin to manifest in your life. Believe you've received them. Don't wait till you start feeling better. Believe you receive it even when you're not feeling better and trust. And we'll get to that. Too many times, though, we go on and on about our situation, don't we? We talk about it rather than to it. We keep circling around the same old problems, circling around the same struggle, same issues. Or maybe those things get even worse because talking about them doesn't change them for the better. But talking to them does talking to anxiety. Talk back to the stuff that's talking to you. Talk back. Be a, boy, there's a reason why we all grew up kind of rebelling against our parents at one point or another. We all rebelled in one way or another. We learned how to talk back to our parents. I'm not saying that that's right. But what I'm saying is if we could do it with the people that love us, we could talk back to the people that love us. Maybe we start talking back to the things that hate us. Talk back to that sickness. Talk back to that anxiety. Talk back to that financial problem. Talk back to that debt. It's been talking to you long enough. That loneliness has been talking to you long enough. That fear has been talking to you long enough. Talk back to that stuff. Talk back to that thing that's saying to you, you're not going to make it or you're a loser. You're a failure. Hey, talk back to that stuff. We got to learn to talk back. Talk back to the things we you talk back to your parents. Talk back to your teachers. Talk back to the pastor. <laughs> Talk back to your situation. And it will obey you. Yeah. Oh, sometimes we focus so much on how we're supposed to obey. We forget how things are supposed to obey us. Got to really get a hold of that. Light will flood your life. Wow, what a powerful secret to our breakthrough, to your breakthrough. Our part is simply to do the trusting. God will take care of the timing. That's how we experience breakthrough, even in times of darkness. Now, listen, if you're joining me today and you haven't received this beautiful promise of salvation, the most important thing in this world is to be saved. If you've not received Jesus as your savior and Lord, before I go any further, let me pray with you right now, right where you're at, no matter what you've been through, no matter what you've done, no matter what's been done to you. When you pray this prayer, you can be absolutely sure you're going to heaven when you die. Pray this with me out loud. Just say, Heavenly Father, I receive Jesus Christ as my savior and Lord. I believe Jesus died for my sin. Come on, say that with me. Pray that with me. I believe Jesus died for my sin and rose from the dead from this moment forward. I'm a child of God. And yes, it's that simple. Jesus did the hard part. All we do is receive this free gift of salvation. Now you are a child of God. Welcome to the family. Welcome home. And I want you to I want to hear from you. I want you to please email me at the address on your screen. I'll send you a copy of my free book, The Power of a New Life, to take you through the next steps of this victorious walk with God. Now, listen, before I finish today, I want to invite you to be a part of something really special. I'm on a mission to see 30 million souls saved and lives transformed. I can't do without you. I need your help today. It's really pretty urgent because we have an open door right now to help precious widows and orphans. I've got such a burden on my heart for those that are hurting and the least fortunate among us. I believe you have that burden, too. That's why I'm so grateful for you. This is the heartbeat of God. And listen, this pandemic across our world is still devastating many lives and families, leaving people orphaned and widowed. And right now we have an opportunity to provide relief and provision and love in action to widows and orphans in our global community in places like Haiti, Peru, India, the Philippines, some of the hardest hit places in the world. You know, recently I got a report from a woman who is a widow with four children, three of whom have special needs. Her name's Mariana and your love came alongside her family in this their season of desperation by providing food and clothing and other needs. And through tears, she thanked us and said, thank you from the bottom of my heart. We'd not be where we are if it wasn't for you, for this ministry, for life changers. Uh, listen, God is so faithful and there are so many other people like Mar Mariana that need this encouragement and help. I want to ask you to stand with me in this project today with a special gift of 250 or more 
two hundred and fifty dollars or more or whatever God puts on your heart or wherever your heart moves you to give. Be as generous as you can. Let's impact as many people as we can. Don't hesitate. Pick up the phone and call right now or go to Gregory TV and you can give your support there. When you do, I want to personally thank you by sending you a few powerful gifts that will build your faith, including today's teaching in its entirety. Here's my announcer to tell you more about that, and I'll be right back. With your gift of $50 or more to help us with this Widows and Orphans Project, Pastor Dickow would like to send you his brand new teaching series, Don't Be Afraid of the Dark, How to Break Through in Times of Darkness, which includes today's teaching in its entirety. Ask for offer Breakthrough One. With your gift of $100 or more, Pastor Dickow would like to also include his popular four CD series, Fearless. Ask for offer Breakthrough Two. With an extraordinary gift of $250 or more, Pastor Gregory Dickow will also send you his book, Fearless, How to Conquer Fear Forever, plus a digital jump drive card of all these teachings and more as his thank you gifts. Please don't wait. Gregory Dickow needs to hear from you today. Live operators are standing by to take your call, or you can go online right now to gregorydickow.tv. Well, I want to encourage you to ask for the Holy Spirit to inspire you to do something in the next few moments that will matter for eternity. You see, our faith is best expressed as we share the gospel of Jesus with people around the world and share God's love in action, but especially with those who are most in need, like the precious widows and orphans I shared with you about. Jesus said, whatever you've done to the least of these, you've done it unto me. Let's do it unto Jesus. Let's do it unto these precious people as well. Anything you do will make the gospel going forth possible. God loves you. And so do I. Don't forget that. In fact, Lord, just I pray for the blessing over every person who's watching this right now. Increase them, heal them, give them the breakthrough that they desperately need in Jesus name. Amen. Now, listen, don't miss our next broadcast. Set your DVR so you never have to miss one of them. And I can't wait to see you then. God bless.